Good morning, friends and fellow traders, and happy Friday. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for June 21st, 2019. So yesterday, big, big gap up, and we ended up with that pop and drop type pattern for a good portion of the day. I'm going to go to a um, just a 15 minute chart here. You can see we sold back off into the gap, filling that gap. And then those bulls, those relentless bulls, just pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed all the way back up, <clears throat> closing, closing markets at new record highs. Pretty darn amazing how strong uh, the market has been here lately. And what an extraordinary move over such a short period of time here in the summer, um, which is, uh, you know, um, so far for the sell in May and go away uh, whole, whole statement, right? So looking at this market, you can see the diamonds actually closed at a record high. We have not made that new record high print, breaking through that resistance level right there, but we did close the diamonds at a new record high at the end of the day yesterday. The SPY also super strong uh, close and new record high um, on that on that move up. Now, both of those candle patterns, we all know both of those candle patterns at the top of a pattern are a little bit on the bearish side, right? Those patterns are considered to be um, hanging men um, at the top. And that can be a little bit of a, a worry uh, for the market that maybe we've just stretched this, this rally a little bit too far, that the bullishness maybe have just gotten a little bit carried away here for the short term. However, I just think it's going to be uh, in the near future. I just can't see us getting this close to making new record highs and not doing it. I think the market wants it. I think it's going to try to push for that. So kind of keep that in mind. We could see a little profit taking today. I wouldn't rule that out for the, uh, just for the possibility of um, taking some of that risk off heading into um, the weekend, especially as tensions between U.S. and Iran seem to be growing uh, pretty rapidly. So we want, might want to watch for the possibility of that profit taking as we head into that weekend. And just, just you know, the old sta statement, you know, better, better to have that bird in hand. We've got those nice profits right now. It might be wise to be thinking about taking some of those and putting them in the bank. So watch this closely. Remember, if we push on up and we break through those all-time highs, that certainly seems doable to me. And I also think it seems doable that we can see a little bit of profit taking, a little bit of pullback um, this morning. Now, futures right now, futures are really pricing in kind of a modest decline this morning. Futures were down all night last night due to the tensions between the U.S. and Iran. But um, they've been creeping up all morning. So the futures, the bulls just don't want to give up. That's that's the case. They, they're they excited about this move. They want to keep this move up. Let's make sure that we understand that we are above our downtrend. We're holding up well. We are now really stretched away from our 50-day moving average. In just a, three days, we're just really stretched away from that 50-day moving average. And so a pullback arrest a consolidation would not be out of the question, but as long as we hold above um, you know, these key levels of support and things, I think we're going to be just fine in the market. So watch that close. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY, um, new record highs, um, everything, blue sky above, um, all is well. But once again, we're just a little bit stretched away. When you think about how quickly this move has occurred, we are really stretched away from that 50-day moving average. Even our short-term averages are 34 EMA, the 20 moving average, haven't been able to even catch up to the 50-day moving average yet. So that puts us in a little bit of a stretch condition and just that possibility of some profit taking maybe going into the weekend. You can see we're looking at a bit of a gap down here this morning um, on the SPY and that could create, you know, just, just a little bit of eh, risk off 
uh, heading into the weekend. And realize as long as we hold on to some of these key levels of support, I think we're going to be okay. And, and honestly, any pullback that holds above that 50-day moving average, which is, you know, down in here, um, any, any pullback that holds on to that, I don't think puts us in a real serious situation of a failure, but we will have to watch for that potential. Let's take a look at the queues. Now, the queues haven't been able to reach up there yet. They've been lagging behind the other indexes because, remember, the trade war is still happening, and we haven't resolved that. In fact, there's no... Uh, particular indication that it will be resolved. Um, we do have negotiations restarting. We do have a proposed meeting between uh, the president and the China uh, and China's leader to um, maybe hammer out the details. There's high hopes of something there, but let's keep in mind these are both very stubborn people. And the chances, uh, to me, seem rather slim that they're going to walk into a room and just work it out. But maybe, you know, anything is possible, and I don't want to say that it's not. So we still have that going on. And, and, and our trade war with China has kind of transitioned over into a tech war, um, largely. So let's watch this pretty closely. But um, the queues still have that um, possibility of reaching up here. Here's those all-time highs breaking out of that showing us that new record and uh, you know when a market gets this close to a new record high the, the bulls they just don't want to give it up they're going to try to push up there eventually for that move whether that happens today or next week or week after that i have no idea just just uh think that it seems likely we'll reach up there at some point in time testing those highs of course if we do get a trade deal all bets are off we could just soar that's a that's a uh, i mean that changes everything uh, and we'll have to reconsider the markets if that does occur but let's keep in mind that um, we have good support levels in here any rest or pullback uh, good levels of support to hold the market up and certainly we're well above that 50-day moving average although maybe a little bit extended away from that 50-day moving average considering the speed of this move let's take a look at iwm even iwm made a good showing yesterday now iwm is still below its overall downtrend it's still running the risk that we could fail here making another lower high in um, iwm but we did have that move. Finally, we had that move where we crossed above, holding above that 50-day moving average. We've got some work here to do. Boy, IWM is not a healthy index at the moment. Looking pretty spooky and shaky. So watch this here. If a short does come into play, meaning if we do see some selling in the overall market, IWM may be the place to be. Uh, for that short condition. So keep an eye on that. Let's take a look at the VIX real quick. The VIX, <clears throat> interestingly enough, even though we were very, very strong yesterday in the market, the VIX bounced around pretty heavily. A little bit of, you know, as we sold off, a little bit of fear came into the market and then in the rally back, we didn't get, even though we hit new record highs, we see the VIX maybe showing a little bit of fear and the understanding that we could be stretched in the short term here. So watch that close if we start uh, creeping up into this area. Remember, we're in pretty good shape here, though. Um, right now, we're in a current downtrend on uh, the VIX. Even a rally back up into here won't hurt us at all as long as we don't hold it as support and rally on through. So let's watch that close. And also keep in mind, we do have a bit of a wedge pattern maybe forming here on um, that VIX, but uh, there's just not enough fear in the market right now to make this a major concern. Just consider the fact that we are pushing those all-time highs, that we are stretched in this move, and a pullback could occur really at any time. Let's take a look at T2122. It's that four-week new high, new low ratio. You can see T21 is very, very consistent in showing when we reach up into this area up here, we've reached kind of that overstretched uh, condition in the market, over, overbought. I don't like the word use the words overbought, oversold very much because I think they're very overused and they 
they have a connotation that means that we must move in the other direction. And that's just not true. Um, when we look at this, you can see we were, this index, um, indicator is really very consistent in showing us when we've reached this area up here that I call a bearish reversal zone. And um, we've moved up into this area here where we could see that reversal at any time. However, I wanted to let you know that we can still move up and we've seen times back in here when we've moved up and held in this area for a considerable period of time. So that is certainly possible. Just the fact that we're stretched doesn't mean we necessarily have to fall. We could consolidate. We could rest up here. All of those things are possible. But we also have to recognize the fact that being up here, we have a very large open door to a downside move if sellers happen to come into play. So let's watch out for that and watch for the possibility that those profit takers could, could begin coming in at any time, particularly as we kind of slide into that weekend. Let's take a look at um, our economic calendar for the day. Our economic calendar has one thing to really move the market around and, and, you know, things that we should be paying attention to anyway. And first off, we have a parade of Fed speakers today. Everybody's going to come out and talk about the um, interest rate things and they're going to be questioned up and down about when is it, how much is it going to be, is it going to be double or nothing, what, what, what are we going to do? Um, so a lot of Fed speak is going to go on today. Also, kind of take note that at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern, the, the, the report that really has the biggest likelihood of moving the market today, um, existing home sales at 10 a.m. Eastern. Our housing starts number were really, really strong um, earlier this week. Let's see if existing home sales hold up as well. Um, so watch that closely. Let's take a peek um, on the uh, earnings calendar. We have very few companies reporting earnings today, a very, very light day on the earnings calendar. And the only one that really is notable is KMX. KMX, um, let's see, when is it reporting? KMX is reporting before the market opens. Looks like it's already reported. KMX gapping up on that news. That's really the only um, earnings report that has any chance of moving the market around today, in my opinion. And um, the only real notable, it looks like we've got a good report out of KMX. So let's keep an eye on that. Let's, um, oops, didn't want to do that. Okay. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a great day. And, and more than that, I want to wish you an awesome, awesome weekend. Hey, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, would you please do me a favor? Click that subscribe button on YouTube. Also, when that pop-up comes up, um, when you click that subscribe button, make sure you click that little bell icon. That's going to... Uh, uh, notify you every time a video is uploaded. Now on the Right Way Options um, YouTube channel, we are very close to um, 600 videos on YouTube. None of these videos um, <clears throat> are meant to predict the market. None of them. Uh, what I try to do with these videos is help people pre prepare for their uh, day and watch for those important things that could affect the market um, where we are. Um, I believe preparation is far more important than, lo than luck. And if you find these videos useful, could you also please click those thumbs up buttons and click um, in there and leave us a, a, a brief comment. Leave a comment as much as you want, but all we need is that brief comment, and that really helps these algorithms show these videos to more people. Thank you so much to those of you who did who do that. I got to be honest with you guys. It's just, it's sometimes overwhelming the kind comments that you guys uh, provide. And I truly, truly appreciate it. And like I say it, um, I say this a lot, but it, it truly humbles me that um, um, so many people find this information useful. Also, please feel free to share this video with any friends or family. Um, if you find it useful, maybe those other folks will as well. So with that, let's take a look at some charts that could be setting up, charts that I've been paying attention to, charts that I've been watching for potential trades. 
this first chart I'm going to show you um, doesn't have any kind of indication the buyer stepping in yet, but I'm watching this chart relatively close. Notice that target breaking through this resistance level up here. And I would say kind of confidently broke through that resistance level up there. Had this has so far had this really light and rather controlled pullback into that support area. I don't know if we're going to get any buyers in here anytime soon. But if we were to get some buyers in here, notice that I've placed an alert on the chart and I'm watching and I'm waiting for the possibility that we could see um, some kind of buying stepping up in here, popping up through that level and then continuing this trend um, on up. So I'm watching that one fairly closely. And just for everyone, um, I, I need to mention that any of the charts that I show you in these videos are meant um, as watch list charts, something for you to evaluate. Um, there's no recommendations to buy or sell any security um, in these videos. So kind of keep that in mind. Now, <clears throat> when, you, when you look at a chart like this, one of the things that I'm always doing and that seems to be opposite to what most people do, most people are running scans and looking for those trades that have already moved. They're, they're looking for that pop that already have, has occurred. So for example, they're, they're chasing these candles like this, trying to get into those trades. And if they enter here, their stop loss here, they're taking considerable risk in the trade. I do something different. I'm always looking for those stocks that are potentially setting up, those stocks that could be pulling back, resting, uh, finding those support levels, and then I'm looking for where my entry might be into those trades. That gives me a bit of a competitive edge in the market. I'm not chasing something that's already moved. I'm paying attention to things that are setting up for the move. And maybe you find that helpful. I don't know, but I wanted to pass that along. Take a look at Snap. Here's an exact example of that. While the stock was um, consolidating to the side, I was setting up the possibility of a trade. And that stock pops up through here, and you can see how that could be a winning position. And now it's consolidating again, the possibility of more of a move up as it just kind of slides over here toward its trend. So I'm looking for those charts ahead of the move and you're going to see a lot of that in these charts that I'm going to show you this morning. Take a look at x-ray. You can see this line across up here. That's my alert for the trade and you can see in the pullback we got the pop up. Now we're resting here. Um, after that breakout yesterday. Whether that holds or not, I don't know. But I think there's still that possibility that this just kind of moves over to the trend and continues on higher. So that's the kind of pattern that I'm looking for in these trades. And it gives me this really high win-loss ratio in my positions. Not only that, it it, it affords me the opportunity to get into trades with low risk. So for example, when I see these trades moving like this and I set that alert, I know that with this consolidation, I can place a stop loss right underneath there if this stock starts to move, which gives me a low risk entry into the trade. And that pop through gives me that um, easy trade as we start moving up in the position. Now, when you do these kind of things, always make sure you're paying attention to price resistance in the chart. Make sure that if you put on trades like this, you understand that um, trends are important and also that price resistance in charts can be very, very important to the profitability of the trade. Make sure you're taking trades that have good risk reward situations as you set up those positions. Take a look at McDonald's here. I think McDonald's MCD looking for more upside here. We're certainly in a nice little trend where we've got this little wedge going on and there's that nice little consolidation again. A little bit of a hammer pattern, a little bit of a follow through. Um, is it possible MCD pops through today? Maybe, but maybe not. It could just continue to consolidate here, waiting to set up that next move through that level and uh, finding those entries into those trades um, is pretty easy with this method. Notice TTWO doing exactly the same thing. Broke through this resistance, now consolidating that move up there. There's really no desire to sell TTWO at the moment. I'm just waiting for the possible entry into that trade that gives me a low risk entry into the position. Um, take a look at um, 
AXP. AXP did exactly that same thing. That nice little light pullback. Got a little spinning top dojis, a little uh, resting candles in here that held above the price support in this chart. That means that when those buyers step in, we resume that uptrend and you can see how well that method works. Um, high probability trades that continue to work over and over and over. So watch charts like that. Hopefully this is helpful to you. Um, I do like to uh, offer up some, some uh, you know, education in all of my videos. So hopefully um, you can see the benefits of following charts like this and paying attention to those nice little trending patterns. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all the very best today, and I want to wish you an awesome, awesome weekend. I know if you're struggling as a trader, this can be a very, very frustrating market with all the gaps and all the whips and everything going on, but it will eventually calm down and better days will come. And one thing we can be assured of, that stocks will continue to trend. And if we stop trying to predict, if we simply start watching trending charts, waiting for the next entry into that trend, we'll do better in our trading. Everyone take care. Have an awesome, awesome day. I wish you all the best. We'll talk to you all bright and early Monday morning. Take care now.